Welcome back to virtuallyred.com. My name is Eric Hinder, and in the last video we configured our transport zone transport nodes. Uh, in this video we're going to configure our logical switches as well as migrate those VMs and configure Active Directory and ident enable Identity Firewall. Um, so here we're going to add a new logical switch for our servers. You see our transport zone populated. The default profile for teaming is good. Here we're going to enter a VLAN. We can do a range of all VLANs for trunking, so 0 through 4094, or we can specify an individual VLAN. We'll click Add. And then up above, we have our switching profile. So we're going to add another one. We're going to name this one Logical Switch VDI. This is our transport zone. Set our VLAN. And we've just created a logical switch for our servers and our VDI desktops. So at this point, we're going to migrate those VMs from their VDS to the NSX logical switch that we've created for each one respectively. So we're going to edit our VDM, our VDI VM, and we're going to change the network adapter backing from the VDS to the logical switch. So there's the logical switch for VDI. We'll click OK there. And OK again. So that configures, reconfigures, and that completes. So now we need to go through each one of our apps and change our apps over to the logical switch for logical switch server. So we'll do the first one, which is our dev app. Edit the settings on DevApp VM, change the network adapter back into the logical switch for logical switch servers. Click OK and OK. Do a quick ping test. And then one dot two or five. You can see that 11.205 is up and active. And so we'll configure our prod app VM just as we did the dev app. So we're going to change the network adapter back into logical switch servers. And click OK. Another quick ping test. And there's ping back from the logical switch and VM. So we'll configure our QA app. So once again, we're using a logical single logical switch for our servers. We could have individual logical switches for things like prod, QA, dev, test. Uh, but in this case, we're just basically trying to demonstrate how even within one logical switch, we can still have uh, security segregation between those workloads with identity firewall. So test out the ping on that. One there, QA app is up, and test app as well as the last. So we'll edit settings on that VM, change the network adapter backing to the logical switch for servers, and click OK. All right, so we've migrated our VDI VM and our applications to their respective logical switches on the NSX network. And we see that those have completed. So now we'll jump back over to NSX Manager. And at this point, we have our VMs connected to our logical switches. So now we need to configure Active Directory. Now we see them up there. There we go. Logical ports. And there they are. So once again, at this point, we see our switches with our VMs attached to them, state up, okay, it's good. So we are ready to move on after we check a couple more ports here. Everything stayed up, look look good. Oh, fantastic, so we'll move back over. And now we're going to configure Active Directory integration. So we do Active Directory integration. Go 
we can click on system and then active directory so simple enough you see the add active directory button there we're going to click it uh, the domain fqdn in this case is just going to be the domain name which is virtually red.local we're going to put the net bias name in and then the base distinguished name so that is going to be whatever the, the lowest level uh, dc or uh, cn that you want with users user groups in it uh, so in this case we're going to do dc dot cc equals virtually red dc equals local uh, there we can specify our synchronization interval and we need to configure an LDAP server. So we click add LDAP, put in the IP address or FQDN of the LDAP server, choose the port and the protocol, a username that has rights to query the domain as well as the full directory tree that you're using for your base distinguished name, and click apply. Now we're going to click save. That completes the integration of Active Directory with VMware MSXT. So we can view the sync status by clicking on View Sync Status. There we see full sync successful the last time. So now at this point, we're going to enable Identity Firewall. So um, enabling Identity Firewall is simple enough. We want to make sure that we have a Initial directory sync at least. We see that success there. We see our LDAP server up. Test connection, it's up. Good. All right. So we have active directory integration, LDAP query complete. So now we're going to configure identity firewall and enable it. So we're going to click on advanced networking and security. And then security and distributed firewall. It's going to prompt us right away that Identity Firewall is currently disabled. So over on the right, we can enable IDFW. We're going to set the status to on. And here you could use standalone hosts as well. We're going to specify the cluster that we want to enable it for. There's our compute cluster. Once again, we only need to protect the compute workloads, not the MSX management components. So enabled there. And we will click save. So that completes enabling Identity Firewall at this point. So now we've enabled Identity Firewall, we're ready to move on to creating rules.